good morning and thank you for joining this talk uh, so this is for those who have attended the previous one this is the second in series of design patterns and python i had delivered a previous one on the basics of design patterns and uh, the first aspect of design pattern that is constructional design patterns so this time we'll be talking about structural design patterns so agenda would be a little bit about me then what design patterns are in a nutshell so that we can have a refresher course cliff notes version of what we had discussed last time then structural patterns introduction to it and all your facade pattern and the steps that is required in implementing a facade pattern next would be uh, proxy pattern and overview of it overview of it then we will move on to implementing it and the q and a so let's get started so about me i am a psc at red hat i am a generalist that means i don't have a specific uh, platform or a specific language that i i would say i am uh, narrowed down to i would say i have up to medium knowledge of almost all platforms and all languages i have authored two books one is uh, web development using ruby on rails another is the dotnet 4.5 experts cookbook both have been published by pact uh, i had authored uh, 60 plus articles for the now defunct devshed portal uh, with a readership of more than uh, 5 million at that time when it uh, went offline i have been a contributor to crane project and game dora both of them are available on github so if you want to contact me these are my contact details let's start on to the main agenda so what are design patterns it was first introduced by geoff known as gang of four what they found was that every carpenter has certain patterns that they use to create house so why don't we just add it to software development and that's how design patterns came into picture they are general reusable solution to commonly occurring problems uh, again the thing is that when we develop something there are certain stuff that gets reused there are certain stuff that problems that always come up how do you initialize an object how do you make two objects work together in such a way that the client doesn't know there are two objects working inside so these are the general issues so design patterns deals with it they are the formalized best practices so each kind of issue has a best practice now when they they get formalized they become part of the design patterns how they are described is it describes the problem the solution when to apply solution and its consequences every design pattern has a consequence please keep that in mind they are classified by intent what they do they are that is creation structure and behavior how do you create an object how do you structurally compose an object and how do you make objects behave as you want they are language neutral that means you can implement whatever you are uh, discussing today for python is implementable for java it is implemented for go it is implemented for c c++ there is no specificity in which language it, it can be implemented and keep please keep in mind not all problems require design patterns think of design patterns as a hammer but don't consider all problems as nail so what are structural patterns they are concerned with how classes and objects can be composed to form larger structures so let's say you have you have you are working on a project you have two main objects or classes one that deals with user data from lms another that deals user data from your ldap now you have the issue that how do you present this data in such a way to the user that user doesn't need to know from where this data is coming that is a structural problem because you have two objects which you want to combine to present to the user user i am using user as just a generic term the specific term would be client there are two main do dominant parts of it first is simplifying the structure how you are creating an application so let's say let say you are the client of that particular api what would you like more having just one simplified api that would 
give you both the data or do you want to call both manually? That is why we are saying simplifying the structure. Identify the relationship between classes and object. How, whether the classes are inherited, that will solve the problem or should we come create use instance of two classes together, two objects together so that create the uh, simplified solution. This is what structural patterns this, uh, talk about. How they are classified into. So whenever we look at structural patterns, there will be two, they'll be majorly divided into two parts. First is object composition pattern. Like, like I just said, you have two ways, two instances of data source. How are you going to combine them and present it to client? Then there are class inheritance patterns. Does, so let's take, there is a particular class, which you don't want to expose to the client, but you want to provide all its functionalities and extend certain functionalities of it. That in such cases, you use the uh, class inheritance patterns of structural patterns. So uh, facade, proxy and bridge come into the first, that is object composition pattern. Adapters come in the second, that is a class inheritance pattern. Now, what is a facade pattern? So every design pattern has two main parts. That is the intent and second, how you are going to use. Apart from whatever I had described as the official document of a pattern. So we'll be going with these internet usages for uh, facade pattern as well as proxy pattern. So intent is provide a unified interface to set of interfaces in a system or subset of subsystems. So let's say, let's take again example of a large enterprise and user profile data. User profile is a system and the subsystems are LMS user profile, uh, LDAP user profile, even SSO based user profile, which may be going into Google or whatever is there. Now, how would you provide a unified interface so that the client doesn't need to go and call each system individually? Define a higher level interface that makes assistance easier to use. Again, I have three different systems. What is the best way so that I can just call and create an instance of one of them and get data from all others. Wrap a complicated subsystem with a simple interface. Uh, let's take example of LDAP. Now, in order to get data from LDAP, you have to have certain steps that you need to do. How would you make it so that the client doesn't know, need to know all the steps? Just provide the username and password and client gets what that I, he or she needs. That's what wrapping a complicated subsystem into a simple interface. Do not hide away the subsystem. Now this is a major part. Even though facade pattern provides you a way to interact with your subsystems in a very simple manner, it doesn't hide away. That means if client wants to directly make a call to let's say CMS data store, he or she would be able to do it. The particular program should be able to do it. So it is not, it is providing a, a layer of abstraction, but it is not hiding away anything. Please keep that in mind. So where do you use it? Common usages are report aggregation, uh, user data aggregation, just like uh, I just described, and subsystem interfacing. Best example is LDAP that I have seen till now. Or if you want to take more generic approach, your laptop, you have a keyboard. How does it work? There are multiple parts of it, but you are providing a unified interface to each of it. Or a better approach answer would be your uh, device manager within the, within whichever DE you are using, where you can go and look at each individual thing, or you can just search for them uh, via the device interface. Manager itself. So, how do you implement a facade pattern? What you need here is first you have to identify the systems that you want to provide facade for. And this is 
very important step. One main part of structural patterns is that you don't use structural patterns. Most of the time you don't use them when you start implementing a project. You use them as your project grows. So unless you have identified the systems or subsystems that you want to provide a gateway or simplified interface to, you don't need to think even think about facade pattern. But let's say you have growing subsystems and you want to make the life of your developers, your clients easier. Then you start thinking of the uh, facade pattern and that is where you define the system. So for example, let, let's say again, take example of the user data. Initially, you only had one place that is a CMS. So you didn't need to create any thing. You would just client can just make direct call to the API provided by CMS. But you added one more data source. That is the LMS. So now rather than asking the client to call it from their end, you can provide a simplified version of API, which internally makes calls to these to and provide the data. So that is defining the system. So in this case, the systems are LMS and the CMS. Second is define the facade. So the simplified API that you're following to your client is a facade. It will have references to the systems the facade is providing interface into. So every facade will be holding references to the subsystems that it is creating a gateway. Third is define the client. Now, when you say define the client, it is basically how the client can call the simplified API, whether or not you want to provide, uh, in what way you, uh, you can tell the client that they can actually go and call the subsystems directly or not. This comes, I would say majorly under, uh, documentation rather than actual code because each and every uh, client can implement a different way but defining a client means providing a contract to the uh, client saying that this is how you can call this facade and this is what the data that you will be getting back from the facade. so how would you do that in python first is let's define the system in this case user profile and since uh, there are multiple user profiles, we'll be making it abstract. And there will be one main method each user profile system would be using. That is the get data. So next, how would you, uh, continuing with the defining the system, let's uh, inherit and implement the abstract. So for the sake of brevity, CMS user is the class and it just uh, prints it uh, overrides the get data, prints getting data from CMS, and LMS user inherits from the user profile again, in, uh, overrides the get data and prints getting data from LMS. Now, the path, the facade. So we are creating a class called user data provider. So what it will do is that it will hold references to both kinds of subsystems it is wrapping up. So CMS user as well as LMS user then it would provide so this is one of the ways it would either provide ways to like get cms user and get lms user you can even have just one says that get user data and then uh, merge these two together that is also possible but in this case for simplicity what we have done is that def get cms user and def get lms user which internally will provide the cms and lms user data and in this case the client doesn't need to know which classes needs to be called to get the CMS user data or the LMS user data. How does the client look like in this case? So in this case, the client would adhere to the contract. That is, it will call the user data provider, create an instance of it, and then start calling the methods that it want to use. Now, as I uh, initially told in the facade pattern, it only creates a easier view of calling onto the uh, subsystems and it does not hide away the actual subsystem itself. So in this case, the client can even directly create an instance of LMS user and call it get data if that's what the client wants. So that concludes the facade pattern. Please tell me if I'm going too fast. Now, moving on to proxy pattern. 
now this is a proxy is a very interesting pattern because proxy when you say proxy you think of very simplified view a proxy to another system however there are multiple kinds of proxies that you can use in the real world so the intent is to represent a complex system in simpler way this looks similar to what we have seen for facade pattern so most of the structural patterns will have this intent with that is to represent a complex system in a simplified way but how does each of these patterns do it and when they are when you should use it differs now what how does proxy pattern simplifies the way that it provides a surrogate or a placeholder for another object to control access to it so rather than uh, providing a way to the interface it will actually provide a surrogate means you wouldn't even know that it is a surrogate of something else that's the speciality of proxy use an extra level of indirection to support distributed control on intelligence facade doesn't have this uh, intelligence if you uh, look at how facade patterns are implemented they are just simplified way of giving access to the subsystems making that getting data from the subsystems easily however for proxy it has this added intelligence that means a proxy can implement authorization it can implement uh, or access control it can even create objects on the fly based on the request that comes from the client and based on this whatever i have told you there are multiple types of proxies you have a virtual proxy virtual proxy is for resources which are which take too much to load for example let's say there is a uh, there's a source report on the server uh, and it has been uh, extracted but every time if you have to go through it and see what all files are that will take long time so you can create a proxy for that particular source report with all the details that is there and instead of running through it every time a request comes you will just use the proxy and say okay these are the things that are there in the source report that's the virtual proxy second is a remote proxy remote proxy is a proxy for remote objects for example you want to connect to ssh there is a particular uh, data that you want to access a file that you want to access what the proxy would do is that it would create do all the connection accessing the data everything for you and you will only see the class the proxy and you wouldn't even know that it is accessing a remote object uh, third is a protective proxy this is something akin to su pseudo users you can say you want to run a command uh, on a particular let's say you want to run you want to execute an api now unless you have certain privileges you shouldn't be able to access the admin data and in such a case the api can actually do the authorization and say that since you don't have admin privileges you can't access this kind of data and return everything back to you that is known as protective proxy last is the smart proxy now, smart proxy are also known as dynamic proxies in some cases so what smart proxy does is uh, let's say you have five classes and you don't know which class object would be required by the client what smart proxy essentially does is that based on the client's requirement it creates a reference to that particular class gives it to the client client does everything and once client usage is done it just destroys it client wouldn't, e wouldn't even know that it, a smart a particular it was working with a proxy now what are the common usages uh, remote resource access we have already discussed access resource that are heavy to instantiate example kind of source report access protected resources so in this uh, talk i will be looking more at protective proxy in terms of implementation so how do you implement a pro uh, protective proxy pattern first is you have to define the subject what do you want to protect and provide an interface for that second part so this is an interface so let us say you want to uh, protect how you are going to uh, respond to an elevated request to executing a command you will create an, a command which has only one method execute 
define the real subject now here comes the play the real subject would actually implement the subject in such a way that it executes the command last is the defining the proxy it implements the same subject that real subjects implements but what it does is that it maintains a reference to a real subject and controls access to the real subject so when a proxy is created it is it will always implement the subject so that the client would never know that it is not accessing the real subject so how does it look like in practice so this is how you define a subject you provide a interface in this case you want to run a command second you create a, the real subject so this is the uh, class that would actually implement the command which implement the interface which the proxy will help the client work with so in this case it just says that uh, for brevity it will just print out that this particular command is executed So what does the proxy does in this case? It also implements from the interface. However, what it does is that it actually checks certain things like whether the uh, user is admin. How does it check? You pass the username and password. If the user have these attributes, it sets that admin is, it is an admin. So it can execute certain other commands that is not executable by uh, non-admin users and then it creates a reference to the actual subject so real subject is the executor so it adds a reference to that executor in this now when you look at the and what then it does is it overrides the run command by itself it checks whether user is admin if it is admin then it calls the run command of the uh, real subject otherwise it checks what kind of command is being done in this case it is removed we are just uh, so let's say that only admin can run rm on a system so it will check whether rm is there is the command rm if it is command is rm and the user is not admin there is an exception saying that this cannot be done by a non-admin user otherwise execute the command so what proxy is doing is that it is essentially implementing the run uh, command method of the subject but adding extra features in such a way that the actual sub actual run command is executed only when after doing certain checks how does the client use it client will just call the proxy and pass the passwords since uh, this is not correct uh, when client tries to run ls minus ltr it works fine because it doesn't need the elevated privileges but when the client tries to run this rm minus rf you get an exception the main thing to remember here is that client does not have direct access to the executor client might not even know that there is an executor working behind the proxy so that completes uh, the discussion on the structural patterns